están perdonando. Call the meeting to order. Let the record reflect that um, we are missing Russ Sumter today and Ed Husband. And we do have our ASB rep, Casey Sickerman, present today for the first time. We've had an ASB rep in quite a long time, almost two years. So welcome, Casey. Um, we will do first. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Review of agenda. I hear we have some changes. Uh, two that I'm, that I'm going to announce. One is on D1, presentation of AESD accreditation plaque to Sultan High School. That will be moved to the November 14th board meeting so that somebody from that organization can actually attend in person. Okay. Second thing, and put this under superintendent's report, required board trainings. I just want to go over the um, educational equity training and some of the parameters around that. Uh, just as a reminder, and then I'll, I'll share some of my observation of the in-person training. Um, I haven't done it, but what I kind of was told about it. And that's all I have. Um, actually, I would like to go into executive session for about 15 minutes for um, review of the input. Okay. And then we will have the audience participation starting with Richard Kinnison. Back, everybody. Good New Year kicked off. Thank you all for the opportunity to speak today. Um, looking forward. Uh, well, first of all, thank you all for you know canceling today. I definitely think we need a few more days of clean air before sending the kids back into school. Um, that's one big thing we've been looking for. I hope everybody else in the valley, as well as you know, board members and all the community, is uh, still safe and being being alert on what's going on with the fire. So hopefully that uh, everyone's keeping an eye on that. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, um, I'm sure as you all would know, the, uh, I don't want to call it a debacle, but the situation regarding the teacher from first grade and the hiring processes and, um, I don't want to say, what's the word, um, oversight or um, complacency in the hiring process. Um, I would hope and I would beg you all to create some type of uh, reform to the hiring process. Um, there was enough, plenty of people in the, in, the, in the school district that were upset and angered by that whole process. And it was, seems like the, the district was trying to make very light of the situation rather than addressing it as we have much smaller issues in the past. Um, I would ask that you all would create some type of reform to the hiring process, the review process. Um, and the background check on these teachers prior to going in. Uh, I know we have spots we need to fill. We're looking to get the best people for those spots. And But I do believe that quality is better than quantity. And someone at some point needs to be held accountable for the decisions that are made regarding these teachers. Uh, the content of the situation, the background, the severity of it um, was, was definitely not acceptable at all for a teacher in our school district. It's not just me, it's not just a handful of people, a handful of parents um, that, are, that are upset by this. I don't think a, a parent with two minutes on Google should do a better job vetting our teachers than our school district does. I think something, should be, something better should be done on the school district side to verify this, not simply look at one social media account and like, okay, he doesn't have one and move on. Um, because in a matter of two minutes, there were three very inappropriate, very targeted to a specific group of people. I'm going to refrain from my language, seeing as we have a, a younger board member up here today. Um, but that process should have been caught, caught much earlier. And if it's not caught much earlier and it's caught later like it did this time, I feel like there should be something sent out to the school district so that parents know that it is, it is being taken care of. I understand that the process for this teacher was done very quietly, very hush-hush, uh, so to speak. Um, being that we've sent letters out addressing it, something needs to be put, I feel like something should be addressed for the, for the district 
to make parents know that what's going to be done, what's going to be changed to make sure that this doesn't happen again. We've seen the past 2018, 2019, this would have been, if this would have happened, you know, it could have progressed into three out of, you know, we don't need a 60% chance of having something like that happen again. Because three out of five years isn't, isn't acceptable at all, in my eyes. Um, that's all I ask of the board. Please implement some type of changes, address the, the school district, and do your best to make sure that we're getting the best quality teachers for our students and not allowing things like that to happen again. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Estes. Uh, greetings board and uh, Casey is it? Yeah, Casey. So Casey, may I ask uh, what grade you're in? I'm a senior this year. Okay. Have you ever been swimming past a barn in the woods up in startup area? No, yeah, I don't think so. Okay, because I know someone from your family has been over at my place swimming. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to uh, briefly discuss the uh, city council meeting that was last Thursday evening. And uh, I went ahead and spoke uh, about the impact fees, as did Charlie and uh, Dan. And uh, I wanted to let you guys know that I did get some feedback from a council member that I'll read it here. It says, uh, I appreciate you coming down and providing comment last night. I believe your comments were valid and well thought out, regardless of your preparedness. I, agree with, I agreed with several points you made and was able to use your opinions to back up my own case, which I feel represents our community versus just my own opinions. And then it goes on to say, you can reach me by email. I'm happy to discuss any other topics you may have. So I don't know what the outcome of that is, but uh, uh, I just wanted to say that even though past history, uh, uh, um, a few years back when I was dogging Dan about those impact fees and, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm forthright and I come back here and I was there supporting the school district too, trying to get those higher impact fees. And so uh, uh, with that said, I just was going to say uh, fumble on the Denver one-yard line, Seattle has the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Is that serious? Uh, 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 I'm sorry, Seattle has the ball. Denver fumbled it on the one yard line. <laughs> They're on nice. one, I hope. No, yeah. R1. They were in the red zone. Okay. Well, that's good. Hopefully, Russell fumbled it too. Is that one other thing, Dan. Casey, you're a senior. The VFW's got a scholarship for graduating seniors. If you oh. don't know about it, you can, it's a, like a one page essay. Um, and if you know anybody else who's graduating this year that might be interested, the VFW's got a scholarship to help you with books next year if you decide to go to college. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Actually, so we're going to go uh, Next is Mandy Geiger. Good evening, board members. Um, I kind of have a question for you guys. Um, have you guys thought about um, moving forward with the district policy to implement um, distant learning on the days that we're not able to attend school that is supposed to be in uh, school day. Like as in like what happened today, you mean? Was yes, ma'am. Gotcha. I don't know that we've looked at that as a like a one day option type thing here and there. Okay. So if there was three consecutive missed days, you've looked at it for that? That I'm not 100% sure what the number is. I was—I'll just tell you—I was asked by the—I got called to, by the newspaper today, and that was a question they posed to me. And um, I said, you know, my own opinion, and again, the board makes the ultimate decision: is that distance learning or remote learning didn't work very well. And so I said, while I understand there's a place for it, and that's a possibility, um, I don't know that I would be for it. But I'm not the ultimate decider on that whole thing. Right, so, the board is. Um, but I, you know, what would my recommendation be? I don't, I don't know, Mandy. I think it takes a little time to pivot into that. You can't just up and off you go. Some of our challenge of operating today, in addition to the weather, is that we had several staff members that were displaced, and so them even being available to be in a place where they had a good internet connection was going to be a challenge if we did go that. Uh, also, as a student, during the time when we had uh, 
online school, it was like uh, Mr. Chadwick said, it was very hard for many kids to focus and actually like be successful in class. Uh, for me, I know it was difficult because many students in our district learn with a very hands-on in the cla classroom type of like brain. Like some kids are wired differently, but um, I just um, homeschooled my daughter for two years. Oh, I'm yeah. well versed in the Department of Schooling at this point. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm well yeah. versed. Um, you know, there are several states. Um, that have gone to implementing distant learning days. Um, I kind of hope that the board would look at that. Uh, we went to school till June 21st this last year. Not sure if anybody realized that. My one daughter who was homeschooled got out May 31st. And um, my daughter who was still going to school here got out June 20, 21st. Um, it would be kind of nice. You know, every student in our district has a laptop. Um, lessons are on Canvas. I'm assuming teachers have a lesson plan. Um, it would be kind of like an emergency plan where we're not able to go to school, so we pivot to distant learning. Um, there's a lot of um, schools within other states that are doing it. I kind of hope you guys would look at it because we haven't even entered <laughs> two weeks of school and we missed a day of school. Um, you know, a lot of people were just, there were a few people that were displaced, um, but the Evergreen State Fairgrounds had a place for them to go. Um, when it floods out on the Ben Howard and Man Road, we don't close school for that. And they're still expected to be at school, I would assume. It would be nice if you guys, as a um, board, would at least talk about it, make a subcommittee, do something, because um, I don't really want to be in school until July, due to the fact that we continuously miss uh, days during the winter. Um, it, kids lose focus at the end of the year. Whether you're focusing, you're losing focus at home a weekend, or whether you're losing focus at the end of the year. Um, that last week that Dakota attended eighth grade, here at the middle school, um, there wasn't a lot of focus going on. So I hope you as a board, I know you're missing two people, um, but it would be nice if you guys could think about it for the students' sake. They just missed out on a, what, a year and a half of being in school. There's kids that are severely behind in their academics. Um, not everybody was afforded the process for the parents to stay home and homeschool them. Um, so at this point, every day that, you know, they, they're losing a day of education is a big deal at this point. I agree. We, it's definitely something we can talk about and, and look into and see what's, what the options are. Okay. How it would work. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thanks for coming. Uh -huh. Consent agenda. Do we have any questions? No. We did. All right. We have a motion to approve approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? I will second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then we will move on to the ASB update. All right. Uh, hi, everyone who doesn't know me. I'm Casey Sipperman, the ASB president. Uh, don't really have that much to report. We had two days of school. <laughs> um, but so far, what I can tell, because I was also there for the freshman day, uh, I think attendance has been pretty good uh, throughout all the classes. I haven't really noticed that many people not at school. Um, also, some like things that really I feel like are encouraging is our student section at the football game Friday was pretty packed. So, especially for the first game, uh, that was pretty... It was good to see, and also for the most, I, I didn't hear any like, because I'm right next to the student section because I'm in band, but they were all respectful to the teams and the players. Uh, I've noticed also there's a new tardy policy at the high school, I don't know if it's at the other schools, probably not elementary school, but um, and um, 
many uh, students can have issues with it. I know this is probably not the place to solve those issues. That's probably more for Sarita or uh, Miss Weber. I mean, sorry. Uh, but yeah, no. But I just have noticed that many um, are not fans or don't think it works as well as it was intended. Uh, and also, the school spirit overall could be improved. I don't know if that's just people aren't excited to be at school after summer or just an overall thing, but uh, me and some other students have plans working to sort of make school a little bit more fun. And yeah, that's that's really all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Uh, yeah. What is the entire policy? Uh, so the target policy is after the uh, bell rings and class starts, the teachers are supposed to um, shut and lock the doors, and then students have to go to the office to get a pass. But what that has done is created a line, so it makes students even more late. So I had one of my friends who um, was in one of the portables, and instead of being like a minute late, it was 10 minutes late to class. So yeah, there, there are some things that I feel like could be improved. Yeah, again, I don't know if this is the place to solve those because I feel like we would need more um, staff workers from the high school. Yeah. Okay. And the adoption of proposed director, district, redistricting boundaries. Dan? So once every 10 years when the census comes up, there's a redistricting process that goes, goes through. We use... Um, a um, person called uh, from Sammamish Data Systems, and what they essentially do is they look at the board director districts, all five of them, and look at how the population has changed among them, and try to redraw them so that they uh, represent as close to possible, as close to possible, equal populations. And so you can see in there that there was a number of um, a number of changes that took place. Uh, we started working on this probably a year and a half ago when it first uh, came to be, knowing that, uh, um, knowing that um, this was going to be um, something we had to get board approved. And so it'll, it'll take place um, starting once, uh, have to have it done by November, and so we're, we've got plenty of time to do that. But I, I recommend that, you know, if you have any questions, we can try to answer those. But otherwise, uh, recommend that you um, pass this and accept it, and we will post it on the website and uh, and let everybody know the subtle changes that have taken place. They're not huge, but they are they are changes. Um, in years past, I think in the year 2000, Russ Sumter, I think, was actually displaced from being on the board for a, for a short time because of the way the, the boundary moved a couple of streets. And in this case, nobody, nobody um, you know, that didn't happen here, but the, the lines were adjusted to account for the population shifts, with most of that happening uh, growth-wise up in Sultan Basin. And up in, I guess it would be districts four and five is where it's kind of all taking place. Growth. Yeah. And some of the others stayed relatively um, stable, and I think the one in Sultan downtown actually shrunk a little bit, if I, you know, from looking at the numbers. So I don't have any questions. I think we went over it plenty. Yeah, a couple, lots of or a couple yeah. meetings ago. So. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it meets the requirements, and mm -hmm. they're about as even as you could possibly get them. Yeah. Did you have any questions? Nope. Okay. We're good. And do we have a motion to to pass the adoption of the proposed director district redistricting boundaries? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minimum basic education requirements, Dan, again. This is something that uh, Kayla and I work on. We're required to go an average of 1,027 hours. And when you look at this particular um, document, you can see that uh, uh, by looking at the average, we're, we're over that, 1,034, when you account for all of our buildings together. And so this is the official document. We're required to turn it in, um, being board approved to uh, OSPI. Um, in the State Board of Education, and so that is before you for your consideration. Has it changed? What are waiver days? Waiver days are days that you can um, do professional development, or in our case, we do some professional development and we do some for conferences. 
when we don't have uh, students in the fall and the spring conferences. And we, we wouldn't be able to do that if our average fell below 1,027. That was my only question. Okay, do you have a motion to approve the minimum basic education requirements? So moved. A motion to have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just don't let the middle school know they have like extra hours more than the rest <laughs> of them. <laughs> okay, and now we move on to Paul for the approval of the Manoa Academy contract 2223. Good evening, directors. Good evening. Uh, so, before you is a, uh, a contract for residential placement that's outside the state of Washington. Um, the reason we have to place outside of the state of Washington, I won't get into the political aspects of that, but mental health and schooling is something the state of Washington does not address when it comes to residential treatment facilities. So our options are very limited when we have students with those types of high needs. And Leona is one of those schools. Um, we have a student currently at that facility. Um, I talked to the mother today and she wanted me to share as she shared with me, a couple letters from the student making significant gains, and the student's only been there four weeks, so uh, it's obviously the right placement for that student. I will let you know that the, uh, the, this is an MPA, uh, a non-public agency, and the cost for this MPA out of state is actually the same cost that we pay for Overlay, so, which is the in-state day school. Yep, I didn't have any questions. I don't it over. Do you have any questions? In other words, as it could be, it's very reasonably priced. It is very reasonably priced, and as you guys know, we put in for safety net for reimbursement for uh, high needs students. So this is one that we submit for safety net for the full amount. <clears throat> okay. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Do I have a motion to approve the Lenoir Academy contract for 2223? Byron, do you want one? Sure, I'll take the motion. Okay, have a motion. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And all again for approval of Northwest Soil Contract 2223. So, ditto from the last time. <laughs> so, this is another non public agency. This is a day school. Um, we have students, um, as you know, we don't, we don't have an emotional behavioral uh, program in our school district. So, many of our students that qualify for that uh, service. We contract with their other agencies to provide that support around behavior and emotion in order to stabilize their behavior so we can reintegrate them back. Uh, Northwest Soil is one of those schools. We currently have one student at that school, and we're beginning the transition of that student returning to our school because it's a success that they've made. So our goal is for not to have any students at that school by the end of the school year. So. Nice. Sounds like it's going well. All right, do I have a motion to approve the Northwest Soil Contract for 2223? So moved. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And all again, approval of Comprehensive School Counseling Program Transition Plan. Okay, so this one is, so the state requires us, this is a new uh, bill that was passed this is last session, and it had to do with the comprehensive school counseling. Uh, we had to create a transition plan to move to development of a comprehensive counseling plan uh, as part of the state requirement. And it looks at how counselors, school counselors, are providing their responsibilities in the school. Uh, some other things, and that model is taking a look at uh, are there things that they are doing that do not have direct service to students. And one of the focus from the state as well as from the nation is that our school counselors have more direct and indirect contact with students and not just some of the administrative duties. So that's part of the plan is looking at how do we move to that and still get all the needs met within the school system. So the transition plan is our initial. Um, I think on the one that you guys saw, it's always in draft form because it's always <coughs> changing. Um, I've worked with the counselors um, at the end of the school year and a little bit over the summer. During our PLCs this year, we'll be working on this as well as the full comprehensive plan, which we'd like to bring back to the school board in the spring to review and then get your approval. Okay. And motion to approve the comprehensive school counseling program transition plan. So moved. A motion to a half second. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
And Paul again, first reading of policy 2161, special education and related services of eligible students. So this one I'm going to be pretty brief on. The highlighted copy that I gave you, very few changes. The couple changes were just to get in line with some of the changes that the legislature put out. Um, specifically focusing on specially designed instruction instead of special education was one of the big changes. It's because that's really what the focus is uh, and what that really means. Um, so that's kind of it in terms of uh, aligning with what the WAC, the new WAC changes are. Uh, the procedure itself is a 41 page procedure. Uh, I reviewed all that in order to get in line with some of the new changes in the legislation legislation around restraint and isolation. There are certain restraints and isolations that are no longer allowed in the state of Washington, such as wall holds and floor holds. Uh, as a district, we have not done these for uh, many, many years. It's not within our, our standard training. We use right response as our standard training. So it's nothing that we have done. We just needed to make reference to it in our procedure that we don't do that. It seemed pretty pretty apparent to me that we were just making changes to, to accommodate the, the state ruling. No questions. Okay. Do I have an approval for the first reading of policy 2161, special education and related services of eligible students? So moved. Do have a second? All, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second reading of policy 3432, emergencies and chapel. So, um, just what's before you, I don't know if there's any, any further issues or questions or any, anything. Otherwise, the second meeting is there and it's ready for passage unless there are um, additional questions and or concerns that need research and or to be addressed. I had no questions. No, I think we addressed it all previously. Mm -hmm. all right, do I have a motion to approve the second reading of policy 3432 emergencies? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And second reading of policy 3417, authorization, Dan Chaplin. Same thing on this one, second reading. Um, and, um, and I just you know, would ask the board if you have any additional concerns and or questions. And if not, uh, I would recommend its approval. I think we talked it through pretty well last time. All right, do I have a motion to approve the second reading of policy 3417? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And we are at second reading of policy 3510 associated student bodies. Dan Chaplick again. Okay. Same thing. Uh, I'm not sure that, uh, uh, that I, can, I can recall any concerns, but if there are any, let me know. Otherwise, I would recommend that, we, um, that you approve it. See anything that concerned me? No. Nope. The same as it was. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the second reading of policy 3510 associated student bodies? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And review of proposed enterprise services, Dan Chaplick and Charlie Weaver. Well, let's kind of set the stage a little bit and then hand up to Charlie a little. Okay. So just to remind the board, going back to, you know, it's been a few years where we've talked about uh, bus replacement lists and the depreciation list. We've talked about equipment replacement lists. We've talked about uh, curriculum replacement schedules and also uh, white fleet. And so Charlie produced, I think it's um, the second document here, um, which gives the actual um, inventory of those. And the um, third document you see up there, and I'll let Charlie talk about this, and I'll, I'll kind of take back over once we get, we'll put up a tool, you can actually price it out. But this is, this is what would be proposed to, um, to um, uh, deal with the, the current list. The challenge is, as you know, as vehicles, we're just not in a position where we can do this. And so we've had this replacement list for a few years, <clears throat> and not really made any noticeable progress. Charlie and Dan Bell and myself, and especially Charlie, have um, 
looked at surplus sales, etc. And right now, you just can't get anything for any reasonable price. But go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, so in the summer of 20, 2013 is when I brought the, the, the schedule to the board. Back then, when we went to 2022, but I extrapolated it out. But um, basically, a plan to um, keep our, our uh, inventory fresh. Um, it, owning, working for a Ford dealership, you know that, that maintaining your stuff and having fresh vehicles um, is cheaper than having very old products that uh, take a lot to uh, maintain. Um, so we've never been able to really fund this uh, model and so uh, this venture, potential venture with Enterprise is to help with the portion of the white fleet and to slowly um, change some of those vehicles so that they're safe um, for staff to take out of district uh, to Spokane or, or you know there's different different things where staff go to for trainings or or for sports um, um, track takes a van to, to Gonzaga for track meet or whatever um, th those vehicles all the, the ones that we have are all ones that I've purchased through uh, state surplus and and they are very high in miles and so we are, you know, to have a vehicle break down in Spokane would be expensive to get it back to, to be probably cheaper to leave it. But. Can you go to the slide before, Kayla? That shows you the actual inventory with the miles. And the lowest mileage is the Ford Explorer. And if I'm seeing it correctly, it was 60,000 miles. Huh? Correct. And that's one that we purchased used um, from... Uh, I believe we got that one from Speedway Chevrolet. Um, that is one of the few, we actually have only purchased two the outside of the uh, state surplus since I've been here. And so as we continue to explore this, you think, well, okay, how do you do this? Um, Charlie has devoted a lot of time to looking at surplus, University of Washington, Washington State surplus, PUD. PUD. Um, number of different places. The challenge is it's all kind of dried up, and even used vehicles are, um, you know, not going for very cheap. And so, Enterprise was introduced to us probably three years ago. We've gone through a few presentations, and really, what we feel obligated to do is bring back to the board a way that we can move forward at a cost of twenty-five to thirty thousand a year um, on a on a lease kind of a program. And uh, that's not all that Charlie would need or want for the white fleet, but from, the, start. from a budget perspective, yeah. that's what. So the, um, the, the would, it would get us a, a few vehicles in, the, in the, some of the greatest need areas. Um, the, uh, the program is a lease program, um, a program that we actually would potentially gain equity in the vehicles. Um, the way that the program works is that you, you lease them, and at a certain point, uh, they Can you put the tool. Up? They um, enterprise recommends a sale of the vehicle, and if the sale of the vehicle is greater than the amount still owed, then we own the equity. And so then we use that equity then to either pocket or to build on that that fleet. So I'll just throw three vehicles out there, from, or, or Charlie, you can throw three. The, the part that I would recommend if you accept a program such as this is some combination, two to three vehicles, no more than $30,000 as a starting point. You'll notice when you look up there, the box truck, it is an outlier in that you have to pay for the box. And I've already, Charlie and I already talked about this. We need a box truck. We're just not at a place where we can do it right now. Mm -hmm. And so as far as starting, if you put... Let's just say you did uh, the F 350 with a snow plow. Put a one in that column and watch what happens down below here. This the, one right here? To your left. To the left. This one. That one. Okay. Put a one in there. And you can see. So there's your yearly cost for that 13000 And you, what you earn in equity is 5800 Okay? And so then put another one. Um, I don't know, Charlie, pick two vehicles. Um, one of each of the two transits, one would be for um, that one and then one to the right. 
one it would be for uh, in the white fleet for the maintenance, and the other one would be for. So that's going to go too high. Student. Thirty-four thousand. Oh, that is too much. Um, then remove the work one. Remove the no. Do that one. That one. Take that one off. Anyway, you just play with it and come up with a combination. Um, the uh, the F three fifty is important. Um, we currently have one with a plow, um, but it would expedite our uh, cleaning out of the parking lots and whatnot when we have snow. It seems to be that, although last year was pretty mild, but um, we've had some pretty, pretty uh, lengthy snow periods in our district. And, and as it was spoken to, missing school days, the sooner that we can get out there and clear snow and make the, uh, the pathways safe, then we can be at school. Um, that's what you got there. You got a Malibu. Yeah. So add a, yeah, you could add one more. You're, you're within range. Um, so there's a number of different combinations. But yeah. the, the, the deal is, is that you can, you know, the, the bottom number is the equity that you earn. And the reason why we're able to do this is they buy these in lots of thousands at a time. And so the pricing we get, in some ways, is better than what a dealer gets for, for this stuff. Because of rebates. Because of the rebates, et cetera. And so it, it is, you know, you don't own the vehicles, but owning vehicles um, really hasn't ever been a, you know, a, um, a great thing. But you, you can re-channel the equity back into the program so that you have, um, you have what you need. So then, like, next year, if we did this and our equity is 18, we can only we can't go over 30. So next year it'd be 48. That would um, add to the if if the vehicles were sold. At, at, well, this is for a um, term of five years. I can, I can't see that far. It's, it's so the way the, the term, term the, 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 you, you enter a three or five year term, but you don't aren't held to it. So if, if the vehicles you have can sell for more than, and they've been selling them for more than they're buying them for, that's a little bit unusual right now. But yeah. um, but that's that's happening, and so that you can rechannel, you know, put the money back into the program and, and have vehicles that you can count on. Um, you know, and, I, and the, I understand that there's you know arguments against having a, a program like this. If you look at the inventory of what we have, and you look at the mileage counts on those. I'm not sure what other answers there are. You know, Charlie um, does a yeoman's job of trying to search around for um, uh, surplus items that we can bid. And even if you're in on one, there's no guarantee you're going to get it because we've lost out on several just because we were, you know, thousand bucks higher or five hundred bucks higher or something. We so. are in a better place today than we were when I started here. We had many vehicles that were well over two hundred thousand miles. Yeah. Um, one of them lives at, at home in Sturdy. <laughs> it was a surplus vehicle. Um, but bucks, uh, That's the number of bucks <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, most of our vehicles were, were um, purchased by um, Seahus when he was here, and that's, I think that was 27 years ago. Yeah. So if it's a three-year or five-year program, is that when you get the equity? Is that that three-year or five-year point? So um, we can sign up for however many years we want. Um, and they reevaluate the vehicles yearly to see if the value of the vehicle, like with, with COVID and the shortage of vehicles, the, the, the used car prices went way up. So people were trading those in off their lease programs, creating equity, and expanding their fleet. And we would do this, this, a similar thing. Is there any advantage to choosing one term over another? Um, just that you're locked in at, at a price um, at, for a lengthier time. But um, you can still get out of it based on yeah, the equity. We, and, we, and, we, and we can get out at any time. It's, it, you're not obligated to stay, even if it's a, a five-year lease. And if we decide, oh, in three years we don't like it, well, what they do is they sell all those vehicles, and if there was any equity or no equity or, or negative equity, that would, it would, the result would be either we pay or we're money ahead. But it's, it's good business sense to um, lease items that are depreciating 
and purchase things that I appreciate. Are we still responsible for the maintenance of them, or? Yeah, but they're brand new vehicles, so. You can do it either way. And, and yeah, they, they do have a program. It costs money, obviously, but um, our average vehicle probably goes five to 7,000 miles a year. So one oil change a year, I mean, it's new vehicles don't have, you know, 7,500 miles, 10,000 miles for oil change. Do you have any more questions? No. I looked at it the last one and brought it up, and I think it looks like a good idea. I did too, and it sounds like that uh, other districts that are kind of in our position are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the way they can uh, manage to take care of a problem when cash flow is an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would suggest we, we go do it. Okay. So, I have a motion to. Uh, approve the proposed enterprise services. I would suggest you add to it between Four, twenty-five and between thirty thousand. Between twenty-five and thirty thousand. Yes. Max. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 What's the score, Charlie? <laughs> it's a requirement when you stand up there. <laughs> Just tell us the score before you leave. But Charlie, when we get to the superintendent's report, we talk a little bit about transportation because that's on that's on my list. Of course. And uh, okay. we're moving right along here. Yeah, we're at the superintendent's report. Okay, so uh, I think the the top item. Let me get out of this screen. Is enrollment um, right now as of today, 2,110 kids in power school, budgeted for 1,895 plus 40 um, 40 in online programs. This school right here has 640, and um, and, and um, built for 500. <laughs> if that, yeah. Uh, Salton High School currently has more kids outside the school than it does inside the school, and um, so the the students are filling in. Those that have homeschooled because of COVID or, or made other choices are coming back, and there's just a whole ton of new kids, and so I would expect enrollment to settle during the first count somewhere between 2,000 and 2,100, hard to tell exactly, and then between um, now and October 1st, when, or the first count day in October, it'll grow as kids are still making their way back or they're moving um, into, into classes. And so it is a, it is a challenge. Um, you know, when you look at it and you have portals and stuff, you've still got a lunchroom that's only built for X amount of kids. And so, but people are doing a good job of making it work. And if you came in from the front entrance there, you can see the, the beginning of the eight foot fence enclosure as a safety mechanism that's gonna go in here. Uh, same thing's gonna happen at Sultan High School. The challenge, we wanted to get it done during the summer, but you know, materials are still hard to get when you need them and um, people have other work that they're doing. And so um, the enrollment, to, you know, again, um, is, is good for right now, but we'll, we'll settle somewhere below uh, 2100. Speaking of the fence, was the decision made on the gates at the high school? Um, no, um, I think that the board had to, you know, has to really kind of weigh in on that. Um, sent you what the risk management said. I think we want to be good neighbors, but at the same time, there's significant concerns mm -hmm. that, you know, would definitely probably lead to say it's probably not a good idea, but I think the board needs to... Do we need to decide that quickly since the... I don't know when the fence is going to get started up there, or...? So Charlie and I talked about this today. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I talked with them today because they were on site uh, starting this project. Um, they have purchased the materials, so if, if we were to accept the, the plea of the two neighbors, um, adding fence, uh, gates to the fence, then we would probably want to act fairly soon just so that it didn't prolong the, the building of the fence. Um, this, this project here is going to take at least all week, potentially Monday, Tuesday, next week. Um, that project up there is probably two and a half weeks of work. Of work. Um, but um, like Dan said, risk management is not a big fan of it. Um, there is a lot of questions in and around how that would work, and um, 
I have some ideas either way, and um, I would bring those to the board should the board choose to uh, allow the gates. Uh, my question is, where are the gates of the high school going to be put? Because, like, looking at the outline of Sultan High School, at least for me, I'm not really seeing any places we could actually put the gates. Because I, I don't know. I, I, I've heard things about it, and I've always just, and I've been wondering, like, where exactly on the on the school is the are the fences going to be placed? Because it's a very open school. It, it is, and it was difficult to encapsulate uh, the educational area of the school. Um, I, I sat with the police fire uh, principal, um, came up with a, a, a good plan. Um, I, I'm, I could send you the, the um, aerial view with the mock-up on it, if you'd like, to share with the school. Um, potentially, so basically the, the 8th Street gate would, instead of running east-west across 8th Street, it would be north-south from, the, oh. from the, the corner post, it would go up straight to the baseball field, oh. allowing access for um, um, citizens to, to travel up that uh, evacuation trail should they need. Um, there would be another gate on the west side of the stadium, um, and it would fence in from the west side of the track to the gym, um, and all the way up and around the, the that little trail behind the school, yeah. um, up behind all the portables, and then on the north side of the school, from the corner of the school, around the portables, and a, a new gate um, to the west of where that rolling gate, where, where you guys go back to the, to the uh, portables. Okay. We have a new one, so all of that area then would be open. Um, the the doors wouldn't be all locked coming in, for so you guys wouldn't just have to come in the 300 um, hallway. Okay. We'd have the other hallways would be accessible. Okay. Um, Is that why they were locked? Because I had a lot of people asking why those. Yeah, because if we have a lockdown, there's too many places for everybody to run to have to yeah, lock the doors. Sense. And the current plan, we have staff attending that. That, that east door. Alright, thank you. Mm -hmm. But I can send that to you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it might be easier to send it to my dad. And then he can just show me. Okay. Alright, thank you. It does, I mean, it sounds like they're going to put it in very, very soon <coughs> before our next meeting. <laughs> it, I, they don't have a date yet. They, 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 this company typically gives me the date after they know that the product is coming to them mm -hmm. so that they don't have to sit on it for a long time. So, so um, we may have a couple weeks. Yeah, so like today when they started this project, they let me know about two and a half, three weeks ago. Okay. It was right right before the last board meeting because um, I let the board know that today was the day that it was going to start. Because it would be something to for us to vote on as soon as we can. Yeah, so that let's get this on the agenda for the next and, meeting. Yeah. Great. Um, back to back to report staffing. We were able to fill most positions, but we, you know, at the end of the time, there's some pair positions we weren't able to. I think Paul, you were successful in getting SLPs and all of the specialty staff needed to serve kids, um, but it, it was a challenge. And um, uh, Spanish, we're using a slightly different model and uh, want to bring that person in. In person, but it, uh, it's there's some there's some positions that are challenging, and so we're we're continuing to um, uh, assess our needs, and especially with more kids present than anticipated, um, we'll see what the needs are as time moves on. Um, good thing we we did purchase those portables because I think we have room for one more class here as far as space, but um, you know all of the buildings are higher than we anticipated. Months. Including transportation. So, if you want to talk a little bit about the bus routes, yeah. So, cur currently, we're two buses heavier than we are than we were last year. Um, when I started in in uh, 2011, we had two buses that went up to the Sultan Basin. One of them was full. One of them also picked up students from um, Gore and um, Chow Farm. Um, currently, we have four buses going up the basin, and they're packed. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of students up there. 
Um, so just the one new neighborhood off of 124th has 65 elementary kids. Um, that's a lot. Um, so we may potentially have to add another one. I've done, I did some shuffling uh, late last week and uh, new routes go out tomorrow. Um, it would have been today, but it's not. Um, and uh, I, hopefully it's even, even going to even those students out, but they, those routes are full. We have a lot of, and there's a lot of houses still getting built. And uh, um, it's a, a good problem to have, I think. Um, growing is better than going backwards, so. But we're challenged. On the links for the bus routes, I've had some parents say that they, um, when they get the email or whatever and they click on the link, it asks them to create a username or password to be able to get back yeah, to that. I saw that on Facebook and yeah. I, I tried from three different laptops at my house um, and none of them did that. Um, it doesn't and, do it for me either. And, and yeah. they said it, it makes you want to log into Outlook. Is it, all my, hmm? Is it SharePoint doing that? Well, the the um, PDFs are housed in SharePoint, um, but it's like I said, none none of my. I think I figured it out. Actually, I think I figured it out. So, if you try to go directly to the file, like somebody shared a link to the file, it won't open. If you do it through the website oh. or you know through the actual share, it, it opens. So if I opened up the PDF and, then and, and, copied and, the and copied it and sent it to somebody, they wouldn't be able to open yeah, it because they didn't a, follow the path. Because I just started copying and pasting the actual bus routes and posting them on social media so people could just mm -hmm. see them because mm -hmm. I kept getting messages yeah, like, what's I was, the bus route? Uh, there was quite a few people that I inst instant messaged and gave yeah. them the information. Um, the, um, the, I'm not an expert at updating the website. My, my secretary is the expert. And uh, the, the process is long. And um, some of the, some of the um, basic um, overview of what each of those routes didn't get updated. And we, we have no idea why, but it's updated today. But um, the, uh, that was part of the confusion because there were some some bus stops changed routes because, like I said, okay. I had to shuffle kids to get the buses. Real quick, did, did did somebody make a motion to approve the personal action report? I thought somebody did. Oh, okay. And then the transportation cooperative. Um, so next Wednesday, Charlie, we have two meetings. Mm -hmm. One is a pre-construction meeting, and I sent the board an email update on this today. It was part of what I was trying to sort through with calling the special meeting. But um, next, our next board meeting on the 26th will suffice because we will, um, you know, we'll have the parameters of working with the contractor and the um, architect, et cetera, and how exactly that will play out. Want to get um, costs of some of the stuff that were removed because of the um, nature of the bid coming in low and the uh, board can consider, you know, how are we going to handle change orders if they come about? And what exactly, you know, would that be just so everybody's on the same page? And then um, get a cost for those. And then on the 21st, we will be able to show you the cash, cash flow tool that we developed based on 4% interest, which is above what we believe it will be. So it's uh, fairly conservative and can kind of go through and show you how this will all work. As far as borrowing the money, it's it's on a TAN, which is a tax um, uh, anticipation note, and you have to have those paid back um, within 18 months after the end of the school year, and so that would be um, in 2023, and we can show you how that all work by by cash flow. Um, fairly complicated, but it it'll it'll all work out, and um, just got to make sure that our numbers are good and our projections are good, and it'll all fit together well and. Within four years, you'll have a new transportation cooperative community. Yes. Yes. Anything else? We talked to you about 
board training too. Uh, board training. So one of the things the legislature passed is um, you know some required trainings for the board to do. One is the the um, records requests. I mean, that's not what this particular document is, but I'll send you out a reminder on that uh, uh, tomorrow when how frequently it needs to be done. Usually it's once a term, um, which would be once every four years, or for new board members, once within the first two years. The other one is educational, educational equity trainings that the board has to, has to do. There's uh, two 2.5-hour trainings. I haven't... Uh, I haven't been to the in-person one, but I but I heard from those that attended it that it needed some work, and so I haven't. You know, I don't know what that means exactly, but I haven't. Um, I haven't. Uh, you know, brought it back to you. Other than the way this works is, is brand new board members. That would be Byron and Gigi. Um, need to do it once within your first two years of being a board member, and um, other board members that are on. Um, that have been board members for a while need to do it once per term. And so I will see if there's an electronic version because the way it works being part of ESD 189 is going to Anacortes isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world to do, to go do a training. And unfortunately at the moment there is no And so that's, um, I think they need to get that fixed. Before, <coughs> you know, I, I mean you can do it, but it would be nice if it was a little more, a little closer, so that driving in, of course, is it's not close. How often do they do them? Um, we've, I've seen schedules. I'll, we'll look tomorrow and send it back out to you, just as a reminder on both um, public records requests and this equity training. Okay. Yeah, and it's, this is all this legislat legislatively driven, and so just have to have to meet it. But it's nice when you're able to do it in the comfort of your own home and. You get a certificate for completion of, uh, of doing it. So, other than that, that's that's all I have. If there are no questions, and would uh, just recommend that we go into uh, executive session for discuss uh, discussion of um, evaluation of public personnel for um, 15 minutes. All right. Do you have a motion to Dismiss into executive session for 15 minutes for review of employee. So moved. I have a motion, I have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that puts us back here about 8.15 for regular, back in regular session. Okay. Yeah, we, it might not even be that long. That would be the maximum. Okay. And so...
Okay, it's going live right now. Tell me, we're live. Go ahead. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned at 8 17 p.m. 8 17. Thank you, guys. So much faster with just three of us. <laughs> Somebody has written some notes today.